great, I got a great panel. Uh, but first, I want to give, uh, give a shout out to Shopware. You know, give your customers and staff the end-to-end -end digital experience that they deserve. It's time to upgrade your management system to Shopware. Get more profit in less time. Find out how. Get a free live demo and a review of shop owner testimonials at shop-ware.com. More time, more profit. And uh, let's get started. Rachel Walker is with us, City Auto Repair, Gainesville, Florida. Raise your hand. There she is. And Kate Jonasi, K Tech, Sebastopol, California, a multi shop owner. Kate. Uh, Kate uh, went to college at my alma mater, too. Uh, Donnie Hudson is here from Troy Auto Care in Troy, Michigan. And Tony, not Tony Adams, I'm sorry, Jeremy Winters, service manager. And, and uh, from. Uh, uh, from from Weaver's Auto Center in Shawnee, Kansas. Now here's here's why Tony Adams was supposed to be here, but he had a terrible, terrible cold. And Jeremy's been on the podcast before, and he goes, "Hey, you know Jeremy? Why don't if if I can't make it, can I put Jeremy in there?" So keep in mind that Jeremy is a service manager, and maybe someone has a great question or two for him. Well, look at while we're waiting for stuff to come in and some questions, uh, I did send out an email question at remarkableresults.biz, some did come in. And so one of the questions that we have here for our panel is, what is the greatest lesson uh, that you learned about and then implemented last year? I implemented a lot these past couple of years. And the, the greatest lesson for me was how much the, the owner's psychology impacts the business and everything in it. So the past few years, I have put, I have, I have looked at myself, done the dig deeping, uh, the, the, the deep um, uh, digging to, to, to transform myself. And the effect on my company culture has been astounding. Like our, our, our company culture is, is, is so good. Everybody wants to um, be a group and be a team. And so I would say for me, like the biggest lesson has been just how much me as the owner and the leader, how much my own psychology and my mood and how I act with my team and with our vendors, how much that really affects the business. Wow. You. Okay, that's amazing. Um, I would say almost exactly the same thing, which is just, it's really cool um, when you start experiencing that and you're able to change the culture. Uh, what a massive impact it has on your business um, and getting everyone on the same page and to become a team can be challenging in a shop. You know, it's almost like you have a factory and a sales office. Um, so getting everybody to understand your purpose and your why. Um, I did the same thing and the digging in the deep part of yourself is like the first steps. And when you do that and you become so much more centered and understanding of who you are, it's just incredible. Um, it's almost like that fog is gone and you can you can lead your team. So that's awesome. I love hearing that. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so I have a follow-up question. Uh, you've got to probably uh, fix the crew too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. M most of my crew was really good, um, so I didn't have to do a lot of fixing. What I found is that people who did not want to be team players, they exited themselves. I had one, one person, one, one technician, a good, good tech, but he did not want to be on the team. And I didn't sweat it because I'd been through my stuff. I did my process. I just rolled with it. I did some recruiting and I found two technicians who are fantastic. I hired them. They, they, they came on before he left. So the timing was perfect. And I got in two, two new techs who are absolutely team players. And I've been observing the shop and going in and, and checking on things and observing the culture and everyone's getting along. It's just nice and mellow. There's no drama. You hear them joking around every once in a while. So um, I didn't even have to take that action. The guy just exited himself. Interesting. We had a question came up from out of Facebook. It says, is doing a complete audit of your business worth the time, not just financial, but culture? I mean, wow, what a home run. It was hit right out of the chute here. That, that culture has been a big and important thing in your business. 100%. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, audience, please take that away. We have talked about this for the last five years on the podcast. Very... Um, I'm trying to fix the right word that, that describes the heaviness of the subject and the topic and the amount of times that we've done it. 
and it it does drive really really good businesses thank you for that um let's here's another gary keys asks let's talk training how important is training both technical and management to your team team very 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 i'm sorry oh, go ahead Donnie. um it that's very very important and and Technical training is very important, but also manager. You know, everybody's got to be on the same page. Everybody has to communicate. The left hand needs what the right hand's doing. So sending, and, and I duly train. So when we send our techs to tech to classes, I send my service managers as well. So vice versa. I also have my technicians sit on our manager trainings that we do. We do them in-house. We also do them together as our BDG group. And uh, that, that hits home. And everybody, again, have, have, having a great culture. You guys are right on the same page as we are. Um, and it used to be, when you got a tech that's just getting by, but he's kind of toxic, well, I can't replace him. I can't afford to replace him. You cannot afford to keep him in your business. He needs to go and you need to create that, that atmosphere. So forget about, I know techs are hard to come by, but you want the culture that, that, that everybody's going to be happy with. Thank you so much for that. Now, now, anyone else who wants to answer, hold on there for a minute, but I want to take this time <clears throat> eight minutes in to remind our Facebook audience that if there's any question that you have, please write it up into Facebook uh, for this panel. And our friend Greg Buckley is going to take them and forward them to us here in the Zoom webinar platform. And if you're signed up for the Zoom webinar platform and you're on with us, you don't necessarily have to be in Facebook because there's a lot that goes on right, right here in Zoom as far as Q&A and chat that goes on. So both, both are kind of neat social platforms and the ability to chat, but we don't monitor the Facebook feed during the Town Hall Academy, which is why Greg's doing that for us. Anyone else have something to contribute about training? The training is just so important, Carm, and what they're talking about, the culture and everything, um, you don't fight the same battle everybody else does whenever you have a culture that just breathes so much positivity in the training. I mean, we get people that want to come to work with us all the time uh, where everybody else is complaining about not being able to find technicians. When you can take the time to build that culture, um, you don't worry about that battle no more. And you, just what you know, Donnie said, uh, when the techs are out of training, the service uh, – front counters at training also, and there's so much good training out there that we have to take advantage of. Yeah, I want to second that just about the um, how people, how recruiting has been one of our biggest challenges, and I know a lot of, a lot of my colleagues' biggest challenges over the past few years. When we had the, we, we had a shift in, in my company culture here, maybe like six months ago it started, and I've got people knocking on the door to want to work for me. I did not have any, any problems. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's what we hear. There's always a waiting line. Everyone in the marketplace knows where the good place is to work. That's true. So two weeks ago, I, I was in Denver uh, at the ASA Colorado Summit, and I was interviewing Phil Carpenter. And he rolled us, so he was on, a, he's on Town Hall Academy, and he rolled me over with a statement that he made. It's very relevant to our topic right now. He said, training is maintenance and it floored me and so on the plane ride home i wrote a keynote speech on training is maintenance and and you know it's not hard to be able to pull all the great bullet points together that um that would uh, really impact why training is so important and now Kate, management training, uh, Rachel, Jeremy, I know Donnie's going to it, but are you guys also at least doing 20, 30, 40 hours a year in that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Um, a a follow-up question, is there any quality training available in your area? How, how, how accessible? I feel like ours is getting a little bit better um, this year, but it's been tough and to be honest, getting my guys to um, believe in going to the training, you know, after work, it's tough. Who want, you know, they've been standing all day and a lot of them, and I've been talking to our vendors and such that put on the training. These guys are hands on guys. Let's have hands on classes. I'll open up my shop. I'll do all these things. And um, it's been a little bit of a struggle, but I think we're headed in the right direction. And I'm just trying to give my input in any way that I can. But they don't want to go and sit in a classroom at 6.30 at night after they've been working all day. Mm -hmm. So I think that we as a whole um, should really pay attention to that. These guys are hands-on guys. Let's give them the things, you know, the hands-on yeah. classes. Yeah. 
I have to make a comment on that. Uh, ASA Florida is really starting to step up their training. Am I right? Yep. Good. Now, I want to share one thing with you. Two weeks ago, we did a Town Hall Academy on localizing national training. And it was a really good episode, but I want to share with you that there are some shop owners, Rachel, to your point about hands-on, that are deciding to hire a really good national trainer and bring in that really hot topic for a particular Saturday or a Sunday at total hands-on, share it with the people in the marketplace up to 20, 30, 40, 50 miles away to send in the team to do hands-on training on a Saturday in whichever shop you are. And they all agree, hey, here's the amount we're paying. Here's all of our costs. We divide it by however many techs are there. Each shop pays their fair share of uh, the number of techs that were there. And bam, you have a hands-on training. And, and you don't have to necessarily wait for a vendor to do this. A vendor wants to do this, great. But I think, to me, there's a pulse in the industry that says you got to control your own destiny here. Right. Agreed. Totally. Agreed. Uh, thank you. Yes, we have Daytona. Yes, we have Daytona. That was a great event. That's from Gary Keys. Great, great. Get, glad to have you here. Another question. How do we get other shops to raise labor rates and join associations like ASA and, uh, and certify techs? That is a huge question. It was raise labor rates, join an association, and certify techs. Um, well, for for us, um, Carm, we you know with our business development group through Napa, we uh, we meet. Matter of fact, we have an owners only meeting coming up uh, next Monday, and we poll we poll all the shops around, and we find out what the labor rates are, and we adjust them accordingly. Because um, you've got guys are out, out there are twenty thirty dollars cheaper, and you guys you got shops that are out there twenty thirty dollars more staying competitive is important but more so you know with the technology coming in the money that we're spending on this and the technology and keeping uh, the training up to date and keeping our staff up to date it, it costs quite a bit of money and uh, that that's a big issue but getting more shops involved and, and and getting other shops to buy into the program and understanding that you know we need to be competitive yes but we also need to make money and we you know we've got to have a profit yeah, yeah, and I'll, and I'll chime in too. I'm in Sebastopol, California, so we're we are a a fairly upscale area, so that that may come into play here. It may or may not, um, but I've found that our customers want the quality service more than they they worry about the price. A lot of times they will call and ask what we charge, but what they're really asking is for help. And I have found that our I don't, as far as our locals, um, other, other shops and the labor rate we charge, it's never, it's never been an issue for us to charge what we need to charge to be profitable as long as we're offering the high quality service that we do and the high level of customer service that we do. Like I'm talking from the time they call on the phone, from the time you check them in, walking them out to their car, washing their car, vacuuming it, stuff like that. High levels of customer service, that's what I've found that people care about most. And if you give them that, then they don't, they don't worry about a few bucks here and there. And they want to be able to trust us, and they do. That's what I have found, at least in our area here. I would actually yeah. second that. I'm sorry, Donnie. No, I, um, unfortunately, in Detroit metro area, we don't have that luxury. I wish, uh, but we're we're working towards that. But yeah, I, I wish that'd be nice because we we are selling our service. Sorry, go ahead, Rachel. Um, I was just gonna actually say that I'm my shop is in a. I don't know. I'm not gonna say rural area, but it's in a or. I don't know, our average income is probably like 40 a year, just right around the shop. But we get customers from the University of Florida. We get customers that are driving through uh, or past our shop to go into Gainesville from Alachua. So we have all different uh, types of customers. And I think I could totally second what Kate said in my area we sell our value and who we are. Um, when they ask for the price, we try to we will give them a price, but we kind of try to build that relationship with them first so that they, they're like, wow, she just gave, you know, spent 10 minutes on the phone explaining that it, you know, there's so many different possibilities. You really need to get it checked out and you create this value because a lot of times people just call and ask the price because they don't know what else to ask. It's a normal thing. Um, and when you can give them a sense of ease and take that, that, tension away from the situation because we're a necessary evil right who wants to go to the you know stop their day to go get their car worked on nobody um so i think i second what kate said as well is just that creating the culture here in the shop 
it just extends and bleeds into your customers. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, Rachel, it's, it's a part of culture when the, the, the service, like the service aspect um, and focusing on the customer and taking care of the customer. Um, and um, what was I going to add? I was going to add one more thing. Um, so I forgot what it was. I dropped it. Go ahead and move on. But, but I absolutely want, it is absolutely part of culture. We don't, um, a lot of shop owners that I've talked to are really worried about this whole labor rate thing. And it's just, it's not been an issue for us. I think some of it may be the area, but I don't think all of it is. Okay, um, I got to stop you. The, the okay. labor rate thing. Ooh, yeah. that was pretty heavy to just leave hanging up there. <laughs> and so I, you know, I, I want to make a comment about the value proposition, Kate, that it seems like you are all offering to your customers. This is our rate. This is why it is. But it's not having to explain what the labor rate is. It is making sure that the offer of their satisfaction, you know, an incredible experience from A to Z is done. You'll pay anything to get that, that value prop. And so what does this labor rate thing really mean? Well, it, it, like you said, it's absolutely about value. So when people call and we talk to them, maybe they ask a price and we say, okay, well, absolutely, I can help you. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Well, my name's Kate, what's yours? How, how, did, you, how did you hear about us? Um, and then you talk about, well, we have a two-year nationwide warranty. So all of our work is, is guaranteed anywhere you go in the country, two-year nationwide warranty. We have certified uh, ASE, certified trained technicians. Yeah. And so you build the value from the very moment that they call you right? because they want value. I mean, granted, there are some people who have an extremely limited budget, but there are financing options available for, for most of them. Um, but most people just really want value. They want to know their money's well spent. We are laid right in the lap of Jeremy. I mean, being on the counter, Jeremy, uh, give us your perspective on this discussion. Well, you know, it's exactly what Kate and Rachel saying about it. I mean, we are... Um, we are an upscale shop too. It's all about the value. Um, you know, it's labor rate. If they're asking you about price and labor rate, you didn't do your job at the front counter uh, the way we always look at it. Um, you know, it's it's building that value, you know, just what you're saying. And uh, to the comment of if you're really worried about helping all your shops and if you are worried about your labor rate, you know, take 30 minutes. We all know what the formulas are to be able to make the money. Go down and help the shop next door to be able to see if they can raise their labor rate, what that would actually do to help them. If you're, you know, if you're worried about your neighborhood and everybody's cutting your throat and stuff like that, let's go help our people out instead of just always sitting back here saying it's a labor rate thing. I mean, it doesn't take long to help people out and they'll see how much money they could be making or how much it's costing them, but it's the value. I mean, if you did your job right, it's all about the value. It's not about the labor rate. Um, you know, our labor rate's flexible. I mean, it moves every day what our labor rate is. We don't have a fixed labor rate. Certain jobs are certain things. I mean, I just, I think a lot of people get hung up on labor rate because they don't know what else to talk about. Don't you think that labor rate is a function of your business, not of the market? Yes. Yes. And I know totally. that's, a pretty, that's a pretty heavy statement that I just threw out there, and it may be worthy of another Town Hall Academy just to discuss that. But thank you. More questions coming in. Thanks, by the way. This is going great. I appreciate that. Let me give another shout out to Shopware. Let's talk SMS systems. Now, no other tool can transform your business like your management system. Shopware's leading shop management system is helping shops like yours generate more profit per ticket and get more efficiency from their staff. Get a free demo at shop-where.com. More time, more profit. Um, another question. Actually, it came from Tom Ham. Uh, Tom's question, and there was a kind of a follow-up about that, is he said, listen, there's, the, you know, there's a lot of inexpensive webinar, online webinars for training. So instead of watching the mindless TV that goes on every night and the stupidest commercials I've ever possibly seen anymore, how do animals and insurance... Never mind, don't get me started. <laughs> So <laughs> are you guys taking advantage of, uh, of the opportunities for online training? Uh, we actually do, but Kate, you know, it all, Kate's absolutely right. Our, our, our technicians don't want to sit in front of a TV and watch, watch TV. They, they, even they at want home at hands night? on, no? yep. okay. even at home right. at night. I, I, I encourage them and, and then they actually get pro bonuses for doing that. But very rarely they worked all day. The last thing was they want to go home and, and work some more. So hands on works a lot better for us. We do have, you know, webinars. We do have monthly shop meetings where we'll throw a training topic in and we'll cover that. But yeah, at, after hours, it's not not for me anyways. doesn't work. You all agree? 
our after it's... hours, it was, we're pretty lucky about it. We have, I mean, we're also in Kansas City and we have the Vision Show. And I mean, we have a lot of great training around us, but um, our local parts vendor, they actually hired a national teacher um, and it cost a lot of money to send them. But the techs don't, at least in our shop, the techs don't mind going to the after night classes if they know it's good training. You know, a lot of those free ones we get, you know, the techs don't want to be there in the first place. But if it's a good trainer, most of our techs, they don't have problems spending the time in the evenings, but they don't want to waste their time. Totally, but going home and doing it as I was talking about on their own yeah, time. But yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Yeah. But but you, uh, Jeremy, brought up a great point. Pay for quality training. Don't be bashful. Don't be afraid. Invest. It's an investment. It's investment. Not totally. Training is maintenance. Remember that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, some really good stuff. In fact, team, I think we need to go back to that whole value prop that you all brought up. And then I continued to this is if you build the value and sell yourself and your business, most people will not even ask price. Exactly, Jeremy, if they are asking labor uh, rates, uh, we failed them from the start now. But what if you're just starting out? How can you get comfortable with your value prop and get rid of the fear of your labor rate. And, and you know what? Thank you for that question, Greg. I'm not sure if it was from you or from Facebook. The thing that hit me about a year ago is that we, we continue to have exceptional people on the show sharing their wisdom. And we want to get down to the startups that are you know running smaller businesses. You've all been there, right? Remember your trek from zero to hero. <laughs> I'll have to say that. And I don't mean zero as anything negative, but you know, you start day one and, and you have nothing. How do we get that message across? How do you start a good culture and how do you start a value prop when you're just starting out? I mean, I think part, well, I didn't start the business. My dad started the business, right? And when I started in the business in 2010, um, it was very broken. Um, I quickly figured out that if I, because I knew nothing, I knew nothing about cars. I knew nothing about running a business. I just found this passion for people, which is why I think my dad started the business because he didn't ever work on cars. He's not a technician. I found this passion for people. So I also love people and I can pretty much get along with anyone. So I found people to attach myself to that knew more about what I was trying to accomplish. And I just surrounded myself with them. It's kind of like that story of our, I guess the idea of um, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you or more successful and you will become that. So I just surrounded myself with all different kinds of shop owners and I just told them I knew nothing and they just poured into me. So my point is, I think that if you're first starting out, don't be afraid to reach out to other people because 90% of people want to help. So be humble and open to that and don't let your ego get in the way because that's what I see a lot um, is, you know, you're supposed to, it's all about competition and you're supposed to be tough and everybody beat your chest and, you know, let's all, it's just, I'm like, are y'all done? <laughs> the, the ego <laughs> thing, just let it go. Don't, don't allow that to um, hinder your success. I second that. All of it. Thank you, team. Thank you. Um, wow. This is great. Anyone on Facebook that has a question, please type it in in the chat. Greg Buckley's going to feed it to us here in the Zoom webinar chat room. Here's another question that came in over the internet uh, this week. Any changes, team, in your technician's pay plans in the last couple of years? We had a big one on ours. Um, we are hourly with a bonus, so we got completely off the flat rate program. So um, it's been about two years now and um, it's, it's worked really good. And we were able to pay, you know, six figure technicians off of an hourly plan. And um, it's, uh, but it's, you know, it's kind of like what Donnie was saying too. We tie in training. I mean, there's so many things that, so many things you want done out of a technician, you can tie into their pay. And, um, but we did go from flat rate to um, hourly with bonuses. We instituted an IRA plan for all our, our technicians that we uh, sp sponsored by the shop. Uh, we did that last year. So every technician they put for it, the company puts in for it, and it's a self-sustained IRA for them. I did something similar, the simple IRAs, so they can take it with them. Mm -hmm. I also, my guys are still flat rate, but I put them on a tier. So if they get, um, for the week, they turn zero to 40 hours, they get a uh, dollar amount and then 40 to 50 they get another dollar amount 50 and above they get another dollar amount so it, it it pushes them to have that drive to 
get the work out, get the work done. Um, and so far, it's done really, really well. One thing that we do, um, Carmen, I think I mentioned this to you before when we were at Napa, um, is I take all my text to SEMA. I, um, we, we do it in two shifts because SEMA is a week long. We send half the text the first week and then the other half the second week. I send them and their wives and I give them some money. As This is your trip, but you got to go to classes during the day. And that works out very well. That's another bonus that we just started doing a couple of years ago. That works out very Donnie, well. Uh, Donnie was on a tunnel academy back in Atlanta that we were there and it was on employee loyalty. And boy, and, and all of the great ideas that the three shop owners that were on with us um, were, were talking about. It was really a great show. We broadcast that live from Napa HQ. You're right, Donnie. Great. Um, yesterday, the Town Hall Academy, uh, the, the podcast from the previous Friday, you know, every Friday, then we next Thursday becomes a podcast. Uh, ironically, the title of that one was Flat Rate versus Hourly Slash Bonus. And it was a very, very interesting, uh, you know, there, there's so much talk in the industry. There's more people that have an hourly bonus program going on as, as independents than flat rate. Yet there was a, a lively debate on the value of flat rate last week. So that was, uh, that was then. Uh, another question, Tom Ham wrote, wrote in, he said, describe your systems for handling comebacks, people. Priority would be one. You know, as soon as that customer comes back, they just spent $200. They just spent a grand with you. It doesn't matter. You show them that um, you're going to take care of it. I'll give you an example. I had a customer the first time they were in, uh, they spent probably, I'm going to say twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 with us. And uh, they came back and it was just a little admissions thing. It wasn't a big deal, but we immediately took it in, took care of it. He called me um, a few days later and said, I just want you to know that it was truly the best experience that I've ever had in a shop. I normally um, make sure that I have a way to leave the shop. I don't ever want to stay at a shop because they're gross, but yours is just wonderful. It's so clean. Um, he said that the way he said, the biggest thing was the way that you handled my comeback. And I know we had a little bit of an issue. It wasn't a big deal, but you, that is what shows someone who you really are. Totally priority right to the top of the list. And you, and you let them know that, that, that right now they're the most important person in your shop and their vehicle is, and you're going to make sure it's taken care of and brought in right away. Totally. Can't agree with you more, Rachel. Awesome. Thank you. We've done shows on comebacks. Just go to my website, type in, type in the search bar, the words comeback. There's a lot of, lot of discussion about how, how to handle it. In fact, even in my, my keynote on nine success strategies, we, we talk about comebacks. And uh, is there anyone that has a system? Uh, truly, I understand the priority of taking care of them, but does anyone have a system? Kate, you would seem to be the person that would have a system. Yeah, we just, I haven't found that we need a system. It doesn't happen very often. Okay, then let, no. me, let me stop you for a minute and say, do you have any way that you record them so that you can look at potential um, areas of concern, parts, suppliers, brands, vehicle, tech? Well, my front office tracks, tracks the number of comebacks and comeback hours, so we do keep a statistic on it, yes. And, and I, I believe that's so important. Uh, a couple of shop owners out there I know track – great detail on every comeback so that they can look for a trend and 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 a lot of there was a point in time where the, every fuel pump tank electric fuel pump was donnie's laughing everybody <laughs> yeah. oh my god those dreaded fuel pumps you know and uh, we can't cover the labor because you didn't do the this to the tank and you didn't flush that you know it, it's it's crazy to see how that happens but then you can have a feeling that I'm getting a lot of these, but until you can literally sit down with your supplier and says, hey, we have a problem. I'm going to have to go, you know, I have loyalty to you, but I may have to go somewhere else to buy that product because it seems like we're doing everything right. And I, and I just think that that's a, a, a key component. You don't want comebacks. So how can you manage them from the root cause? It's by tracking them. You're right. It's by tracking them. Um, thank you for that, Tom, and thank you for your, your comments. I appreciate it. Um, here's from Al Wright. Starting out, don't be afraid of your labor rate because I will guarantee that, that uh, you that the customer has paid it before. And customers don't complain when they go to the doctor or dentist. They pay the price and don't negotiate. We are professionals and need to charge for it. Boy, amen. that's an amen. Yep. That's an amen. Thank you so much for that. Um, 
there's been a, there's a, an awful lot of great comments. In fact, Tom Ham said about webinars and live events that he says they're getting much better and uh, they're even going on during the day. So, you know, I, I love the whole lunch and learn thing. People tell me that they even use the Town Hall Academy on Fridays to, you know, they, they see a great, great topic and they say, hey, let's, we'll, we'll buy some pizzas and let's invest in the chatter. And, you know, everybody learns from, from what we do because we're sharing wisdom. Thank you for this. Uh, uh, any, any comments in between if I move to another question? Anybody want to chime in on something? My panel is happy so far. <laughs> okay, team, the biggest trend you are watching that may impact your business. I'm watching the electric vehicle trend. Yeah. Uh, we have more and more customers that are getting them, but it hasn't impacted our car count yet. So I, I believe that we have many more years left on that, maybe a decade. I don't know, I'm guessing. Um, but that would be the one trend that I'm watching. I'm confident that whatever happens, we'll be able to adapt to it as long as I'm adaptable and I help my crew adapt. But that's, that's the one trend I'm watching. I would agree with Kate on that. It's the same thing, um, especially since we have a collision side on there. So we get to see a lot of brand new vehicles come in and uh, the electric vehicles that are coming in. I mean, it's big SUVs. It's not just the Prius. I mean, there's a lot of electric vehicles coming through. So um, we actually are a tech. He's doing a lot of training on trying to get ready for it. It hasn't affected us yet, but it is coming. I do believe EVs are like less than 2%, right under 2% of the, the car park. And I, I do know that there was a, a great uh, a, a confidence in internal combustion engines still and yet. But Kate, I think you're right to, to be concerned about that because look at, I don't know if you agree or disagree with me, but it seems to me that every 10 years, we have to change our business model. You know, maybe there was a point in time in the early days that that thing was, you know, as boring as all get out for maybe 30 years. But now tech is forcing us to rethink things. Agree? Yep. Totally. So anyone here uh, heavy in hybrid repair? Kate, you got to be. We, we see quite a few. Okay. Um, I have my technicians are, are uh, I have not all my techs, but at least one tech at each shop is, is trained in hybrids. Um, and has their hybrid certification. I have the gloves. I have the the tools. Um, Are you marketing not, hybrid? I am currently not marketing hybrid. I could. I'm so we're so busy right now that I I don't need to. But if I want to expand, I could absolutely market hybrid. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, you doing hybrids uh, out there in Detroit? Yeah, not too many. Um, it has not been a big impact on our business yet. Uh, I do have one tech at the new shop uh, that we opened up uh, that is hybrid certified. He's the only one I have, but very, very little. We're seeing a lot on the roadside, uh, but not coming into the shop. Thank you for that. Um, the impact of a business coach, if you've ever had one or currently have one on your business. I'm all about it. Um, I'll tell you, I, there was a lot of things that have happened over this past year with uh, you know, fixing the culture, but then um, I ended up having to fire the cancer of the company, which was the manager. And then two other uh, employees followed him within a month and a half. And it put me back on the front counter um, by myself. And it was super challenging and it made me stop all the things that I had gotten to a point where I was working on it rather than in it so much. And I kind of had to completely go back. And I hadn't gone to a a group meeting um, in almost a year. And I just recently went and I'm like, I felt like a new person when I got back. Just gives me that spark and, and kind of, it allows you, if nothing else, it allows you to collaborate with other people that are in the same situations that you are. And it also allows you to take a moment outside of your business and look at it in a totally different light. And if you don't surround yourself again with successful people or people that are understanding what you're going through when you get to the top and you're the you're the top dog at the shop and no one else has to hold you accountable it can get lonely you have to have other shop owners people that understand you my husband's not in the industry he doesn't understand everything that i talk about there's there's so many challenges that we face and i think that it's really important to surround yourself with other people that understand what you're going through yeah, absolutely. I started by my my first company over 10 years ago and I started, I have a technical background, so I was a tech before I started. Basically, I was a technician just branching out on my own. I didn't know how to run a business 
Um, after about nine months or a year, I got connected with a, a consulting company. They were management success, now they're drive. Um, and I've been with them for most of my time as a shop owner. And I've had a consultant there. They've, they've taught me their systems. I implemented them with massive success. Um, and then these past several years, I have joined a, the, the top 20 group that is part of, part of that culture. And so twice a year, we do shop visitations where we'll go to each other's shops all as a group. So I just had 36 shop owners at my shop a couple weekends ago. And we made it a fun thing, like a fun bonding thing to get to know each other and be with each other, not just in a shop owner sense, but, but also like in a human sense. And then also we dug into my shop. I had my staff there and we talked about what we do. We talked about how our systems, they ask questions and kind of really dig in. And it was a, it's a learning experience on both sides because those shop owners get to see what we're doing and they get ideas from us and I get ideas from them. So it's, it's been so beneficial. You cannot do it alone. It's, it's, do not try to do it alone. There's just so many, so many good people out there that you can connect with to just to, to help us be the best that we can be. It's so refreshing to hear that. I hear it all the time from the top 20% in our industry. And I don't mean to put down the other 80 or, or you know, b below that. But the point is, is it's working. Uh, coaching is working. Mentoring is working. 20 groups are working. Shop tours are working. And it's changing who we are. There's enough business for everything. If anyone gets my email, my insider email, uh, and I send out maybe three or four a week, today's Monday. Please read Monday. It's about the secret sauce that everyone so covets in the industry. And I explode it out. And, you know, I've done a few rants on the secret sauce. And Kate just exposed us how her sauce recipe works. It, 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 it's open, right? A little oregano, a little garlic. Yeah, oh, you tell me. And, and, that's how, and that's how you blossom and that's how you grow in, in our wonderful industry. God, thank God for that business coaching. Anyone else want to share any experience? Because I think we have a chance to push this theme. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I'm not an owner, but I can just tell you on the management side, um, the business coach, it, um, it made a huge difference because, um, you know, like everybody else has been talking about, you need to be able to bounce those ideas off. You need to be able to talk to somebody. And whenever you have a business coach like that, um, you know, it really helps out and the struggles instead of you just sitting around guessing what's your, what's your next step and you're not sure, you always have that person to visit with. So um, it, it's been a game changer in our industry. I have a little bit different approach. Uh, we have a business development group and there are you know, 15 auto care centers and we meet a uh, second Monday of each month and we go to each other's shop. We've done kind of the same thing Kate was talking about. We go to other people's shops and we've got two or three new shops that have just come on board. A guy's just starting out. It's fun to help mentor and mold their business and give them the ideas. And we all learn, uh, you know, we've been, I've been in business 58 since my dad started uh, our family business. And, you know, today, every single day, we're still learning something and we learn from each other. So absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I certainly get involved with the group. Love to hear from you, Rachel. Oh, just, well, I mean, I thought I already shared. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, oh, no, you did. I, I apologize. I, there's okay. so much going on here in the studio. Thank you. You just I, get so excited, Carm. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> His passion is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> no. it's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, one more time for Carolyn and the Shopware team. If you've haven't thought about your management software yet this year and you say, you know what, this stodgy old thing needs to go. Shopware Shop Management is transforming the way shops like yours do business by giving you tools to increase your sales while delighting your customers. Go to shop-ware.com for all the details, more time, more profit. I'm going to see Kate for the first time in person this summer at a big conference that she's going to that, that I'll also be at. And uh, I'll see Donnie, I believe, in Las Vegas in April, right? I absolutely. It's just great. You know, there's so many things going on for and with the podcast and places that I'm going and bringing my studio and taking recordings back. So fun for that. You know, this has been great. We're like 41 minutes in. There's been so much coming up here on the, the webinar chat that it seems to me that this is a really cool open forum, you know, idea here. And that we, we need to do this again. And um, there's a questions that came in that I haven't gotten to. There's even questions from the webinar. Uh, but one of the things that I need to point out to everyone 
because of what you talked about in coaching was the big factor called the accountability factor. And, and, and it seems to me that when you distill coaching or supporting or mentoring or 20 groups down, uh, you get some accountability out of it because I say this a lot. You put your head on the pillow at night and you go to sleep. You're, you didn't do anything that you knew you had to do to move your business forward. You're only kidding yourself. And then you get up in the morning and you look and says, you know, I got to do this. You look at the mirror, you look at that person in the mirror and you say, I got to do this. And then at night you put your head on the pillow and you say, I didn't do this. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it, it's a, it's a terrible and it's an ugly cycle and you can't move your business forward without, uh, without being more accountable to yourself. And that is, dates and times and plans and, and, and who's going to be responsible for these things that move your business forward. Yet beauty of hiring a coach, not only for that or a consultant, not only for that, the accountability piece, but to learn so much more about how to run a great business and, you know, where, where should my KPIs be? And, you know, and how much should I spend on marketing? And I don't have any cash. Where's the cash go? Where'd the cash go? Uh, great stuff. Oh, by the way, Donnie, you had you you said something that was so uh, that, that it prompted me to write one of my favorite uh, three words. When you teach, you learn. Teach, you learn. And right. so whenever you share what you know to people, it reminds you how important that is to you, and it solidifies your conviction to it. Okay, um, I'm going to ask one more question. That um, you know, there's there's a lot of. I like the format, Gary says, keep it as a regular show. Cool. I love it. Uh, amen to coaching uh, and group learning and accountability from Kevin Eckler. Um, Tom Ham says, let me, let me pick one of his questions. We'll, we'll, we'll leave with this. When you are, <laughs> this is so interesting. When you're ready to get out, how do you plan to do so? And you know, Rachel and, and, and Kate and, and Donnie, you guys are young yet but they always say that your succession plan starts the day you put the key in the door. <laughs> and it, it really, you know, every decision you make is made based on your succession plan, be it internal candidate or not. Uh, and any thoughts on that is, is our last question. I just, I agree with that, that it should, you should have an eye to that. Um, I have intentions of putting, putting more attention on that this year, now that I've been coming to realize the importance of it. So I don't have a solution yet, but I absolutely want to say, yeah, you should, you should have an eye on, on the future and how you plan to exit. There's so, some people that say that uh, when you do an interview, always be interviewing for your successor. If you don't have an internal candidate already picked or it's family. Donnie, what about you? Actually, I have not thought about that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm probably going to retire from as my fire department this year, but uh, I have not thought about that at all. But that's good, and 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 we at, we actually brought that up as a as business development group, and and hopefully, in uh, when we go out to Las Vegas, there's two or three um, good conferences on that, yep. and yep. You know, we want to look at that. I got two younger boys, so I'm hoping they follow in Dad's footsteps. They okay. are now, but all we'll right. see. Well, then you know, here's the thing in family businesses: um, the boys are going to take over the business. I, I just know it. You never told them. <laughs> you never told them you had dreams or aspirations for them. And then they go off in their own directions and you sit by and you say, what happened? Well, you never really talked to him. You know, maybe there's, maybe one of the boys has that, that hands-on uh, thing and he, he's in the shop and the other one's got the brains and he's in the shop because your business. There, I, I think family succession is there. I just don't think it's handled right. Yeah, I think you're I, absolutely true yeah. uh, because um, you know, my, my dad didn't certainly talk to us about, you know, staying in the shop and that's kind of, kind of went off my own way. And then I kind of found myself again back in the shop and I absolutely love it. So my boys now are. I know what he are, said to you, Donnie. I know what he said to you. He said, listen, yeah. I'm going to pay you $10 an hour. And someday, Donnie, all of this will, will be, be yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so much, but, uh, you know, and I'm trying, I'm, I don't want to push my boys. They both work. Uh, one is exactly Carm. One is uh, on the road. The other one is in the shop. Um, so we'll see, but it, it is to be, it needs to be thought of because uh, it, it, it's absolutely relevant 
you know, a, 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 a 10 or 15 year plan while you're still young and you can get out and do things. You know, uh, I, I, I listen, we have a ton of episodes on the podcast on succession planning. I, I, I can't I have to say that there's 40 or 50 that would that would hit it. And I don't think we could pay more attention to it, no matter how how young we are in our business, because you never know where the opportunity comes up. And someone walks in, Kate knocks on your door and says, I'm looking for two places in this beautiful northern part of you know, where all the big trees are in California. <laughs> and you say, and you say, uh, I, 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 uh, when the person walks in and says, I've been waiting for you to come. That's what you need to say. Rachel, family business, any, any thoughts? Um, you know, lots of thoughts actually running through my head. Um, I remember, you know, coming into this business and, it wasn't a plan for me to take over the business. And I, I, it just kind of happened because I realized that I was so much like my father. And I tell people all the time, I, I'm a very passionate person. And so over the years, employees that I've hired, they're like, oh, I just want to be just like you. And I'm like, well, this is my passion. I, I mean, if you want to work in the shop, great. But everybody needs to find their own passion and purpose in life because if you don't, it's not going to be very much fun. Um, and the hard times when, you know, it really hits the fan. If you don't have the passion and the true love and desire for what you're doing, it's going to be really hard. I mean, harder than it already should be. You know what I mean? So I, the family business side, I mean, I went through some really tough times. I have a better relationship now with my father. Um, once I, as he says, fired him multiple times. Um, but once I got the business and then I bought the property and there's, there's no business relationship there anymore. It's fabulous. Um, I kind of got burnt out with the family side, but I've seen just being around so many shop owners, there are so many families that work together and it's just incredible. I mean, to have someone that you can truly, no matter what, you know, they're there and to have that trust with them. I mean, it's amazing. So I hope that it works out for you, Donnie, with your boys. Thanks. My wife is, uh, she's actually running the other shop. And then I got my brother, Frank as well. So we're still embedded. Frank's probably getting up there to retiring age, but uh, hopefully it'll work out. Um, but again, I'm never going to push them. If it's what they want, I will give them all the tools they have and I'll always support them. Um, but they have to have the passion for it. Right now, they're too young to have that passion, but it'll come in time or it won't come in time. Yeah. <clears throat> Wow, we could go off on a completely different tangent. I'm sitting back on so many comments, but thank you all so much. Rachel uh, did a great interview with me a, a while back, so transparent about the family business and her relationship with her dad. You, you will love it. Just look up, uh, just type in Rachel in my, in my search box and, and that episode will come up. And thank you all for that. Jeremy Winters, appreciate you being here. Jeremy from Weaver's Auto Center, pitch hitting for Tony Adams from Shawnee, Kansas. Donnie Hudson's here. Uh, Troy Auto Care in Troy, Michigan, Kate Jonassey from KTEC Sebastopol, California, and Rachel Walker from City Auto Repair, Gainesville, Florida. Thank you so much for our inaugural Ask the Shop Owner. <laughs>